man, all kind of technical difficulties. All kinds of technical difficulties. I just don't know. You can't, you just can't be technology. <laughs> So we'll try this again. Guess we gotta wait for the audience to build again. Man, it just shut that stuff down. I guess I shouldn't let my electrical connection sit out in the rain. But I got the new S7 Edge phone. You're supposed to be able to drop the sucker in the water. So much for the hype. That's like those waterproof gloves. They don't seem to be working all that much. Just waiting a few minutes for the audience to rebuild. I don't know what happened, it just took me right off. About time to go for our daily ride and talk about a few things. It's like a beautiful day out here. It's magnificent. Can you guys hear me pretty good? Outstanding. Just trying to get the numbers up and then hire Black Sabbath. What's up, Andre? Black Sabbath in the house. Yes, sir. King Nook. I don't know how to say the last name. Like, Re? King Nook Re? Rex, maybe? I need to look that up. It's good to have you. So first of all, I would like to uh, encourage you all to go to uh, Marcel Tillman's, Tillman's page. He's a Kings of the South brother. For those of you who don't know him, he's with FHO. What's up, CIA MC? Good to see y'all. Is that like the real CIA? Holy moly. Uh, what's up, Jack? Whoa. Dude, there's a stop sign there. These people. Okay. Uh, trying to get like you too, Brother Orr. What's up, Jacksonville, CIA, Angel Santiago? It's good to see you all. I want to encourage you all to... Uh, Check out Marcel Tillman, Big Cell. He goes all over the country. Uh, FHO, Fast Harleys Only. Uh, he did a very interesting post today called, What is Support? Ow! Stop it, man. What is support? So uh, he had a talk today about what support is. I shared that on my page. What's up, Backdraft? 
and uh, Dallas in the building, getting my book. Well, I sure would appreciate it. So uh, get, go check out Big Sales' uh, uh, video on support today because it's an interesting video and um, it'll point out some things to some of you who are slipping in the support area and what you think support is. It's really kind of interesting because I was going to do a video just like it myself within the next day or two, which I'm still going to do one, but his is awesome. Also, I'm going to have public relations officer training. Uh, it's going to be like every Tuesday night or something. If you know any PROs, hit me up. It's going to be a phone training. It's going to be about six to eight weeks long, and it's going to take you through every aspect of public relations that you can imagine. So it's, public, it's free PRO training. You don't have to get my book, PRO's Bible, the Motorcycle Club PRO's Bible. A lot of the stuff I'll be teaching you about will be in the MC PRO's Bible, but it's going to be an awesome training course. Uh, my books, Prospects Bible at prospectsbible.com, Amazon, and Kindle. It's been a number one bestseller off and on for the last uh, two years. Two years in October. Motorcycle Club, Public Relations Officers Bible, mcprosbible.com, mcpro with an S, dot com. I get more money if you buy them off my website. And also, the Prospects Bible for Women, pro, uh, the Prospects Bible for Women's Motorcycle Clubs, which is prospectsbibleforwomen.com, or Kindle, or Amazon. You can even go into Barnes & Noble and order it, and they'll have it for you in a week. Pretty soon I'll be on the shelves in Barnes & Noble, getting big. And also, I want to tell you guys about Kill Proof. Avoiding, uh, uh, avoiding uh, police stops, no, surviving police stops, renegade cops, and angry vigilantes with guns at thekillproofbook.com. I have a Get Fit Challenge coming up. One of the brothers told me about a Get Fit Challenge that we're going to do starting September 1st. Everybody's going to weigh in. We're going to lose weight. I'm at about 52, 53 pounds. I keep going up and down so far over the last, since April. So my goal is 100, maybe 130 pounds off. So you guys that want to do this with me, come do this with me. So what we want to talk about today, now that we've done our commercials, is um, we want to talk about Hey, don't run that. Don't run. Hey, it's my, I, yeah. Okay, thank you. All right. So what we want to talk about today is um, presidents and officers. Are you training your replacement? I heard a man once say, to hell with those guys. I ain't teaching them this word. You know, I'm trying to stop cursing. I ain't teaching them nothing. Nobody taught me, and I'm not giving this away for free. Really? Is that how you really feel? So, dawned upon me that if you're not training your replacement, wow, uh, that's a terrible thing for the employee. So. I remember the first time somebody ever told me he wanted my job as national president. Man, I got pissed off. I screamed at him, yelled at him, you could never do this job, and or, 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 or shouted at him and got all mad. You know, I didn't want anybody to replace me and take this patch here. You see, we fall in love with these patches on the front. It's the patches on the back we should be worried about. And yes, I too have been a front patch lover. That's what I call them, front patch lovers. You front patch lover. So, you know, we love the front patch. It says our name, who we are, where we've been, and most of all, it gives our position. I am road captain. I am president. I'm vice president. I'm national president. I get to be over you. I'm over you. Ah! Really? And ain't nobody getting paid a damn thing. It'd be a different story if I was getting like, you know, 50 bucks an hour to move this thing, then uh, 
maybe that shit uh, stuff would mean something. But it doesn't mean anything at all. Except that people follow me because they love me. And that's the only reason they follow you. Because you ain't paying them shit. I mean anything. And so, presidents and officers, we got to get off this trip where we think we're better than somebody because we've been longer, we founded a club, or for some kind of reason, we think that the patch on the front of us makes us way bigger than the patch on the back of us. And I too have suffered. I often tell everyone, everything that I am against is everything that I have probably once been. I am not spotless in this. Oh, Black Dragon's got it all together. Mm -mm. I've broken many of these rules. That's why I sit here and I tell you these things because I don't tell you from experience of I've never done anything wrong and I've got a perfect club. I tell you from the experience of somebody that can tell you exactly what not to do because it's ruined many clubs. I've lost clubs. I've lost chapters and I've lost brothers and sisters that I would love to have back. They've gone over to other MCs where they are perfect citizens, where they could have been outstanding citizens in my MC. So I came up with this and you can find this uh, on Facebook, uh, on my page. And uh, these are my sayings, Black Dragon sayings. And I came up with this saying right here that says, um, Train people well. Train them well enough so that they can leave. Then treat them well enough so that they won't want to. So, there's a little story to this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wow. Okay. There's a little story to this. It said, uh, someone asked me today if I could one day, a long time from now, turn over the MC and trust others to run it after I'm gone. I smiled when I said, my MC could get rid of me tomorrow because I've worked hard to train them all for success. I've spent my time training my replacements. To truly train officers and members in your motorcycle club for success, you've got to do a few things. First of all, you will have to train them to replace you. Hey, what's up, Frank? Thanks, Frank and Johnique for coming on. The second thing you have to do is you will have to freely give them all of the keys to success that you worked your ass off to get that no one gave you. No one taught me anything. I got everything on my own. But when you're giving people lessons and you're teaching them, you don't hold those keys to your own self for self. You freely give away those keys that you fought so hard to get, that you clawed for. The little secrets, the little shortcuts, the don't do this because this will cost you that pain. Don't do that because that will cost you members. Don't do this because people don't like that. You give that away freely, even though you worked hard to get it. You build bridges for your members' success and your officers. You build bridges that they could not know how to build. They don't know how to do that, but you do. So you're training them for success. You build bridges for them. You introduce them to people. You, you remove obstacles. These are things that you do when you're training people to replace you. Yes, you make life easier for them easier than it was for you. You clear pathways for their successes that they could not even know were even covered. So you're out there with the enemy and you uncover the minefields that they don't even know about. Those are minefields that they would step in except for you. You are the person that um, that did that for them. Topeka, Kansas, thank you for watching my videos. Here's the deal. 
after you train these people, removed obstacles from their path, cleared pathways that they never knew were covered, and built bridges they never knew to build, then you will stand proud of their success because they will have replaced you. And this is why the motorcycle club, the MC, truly belongs to them. It will never be yours, President, for you are simply a servant of the MC. I want to talk about service tonight. I want to talk about your service to the MC as an officer. Your service to the MC is the only thing that you can claim at the end of this. How did I serve the MC? I want to ask you, does your front patch serve the MC or does your front patch serve you? Think about that. I once knew a president, really incredible guy, over at a motorcycle club called the Strikers. One day, I saw him, and he was the president. A couple months later, I saw him, and he was the PRO. I was like, man, what happened? You're the PRO. Yeah. They elected somebody else president, he said. So, I'm going to serve as the best damn PRO they ever had. I saw him again after several months, and he was the president again. I said, you're the president again? Yeah. They thought I did a good job, probably a little better than the last guy. I was so moved by that guy that president of the strikers over in Atlanta. I never forgot him. I never forgot his example of service to the MC. He was proud to serve in any damn capacity. It made me look at my own self and say, could I wear a prospect's patch again? If that was what was called for? And would I serve as the best damn prospect my MC ever saw. So then I ask you, what is your service to the MC? Are you training your replacement? How do you train your replacement? How do you train someone to replace you? You stay in their ass. Uh, rear end. I'm trying to stop person. You stay in their rear end like Paul Pitt Perry stayed in my rear end for 20 years. Constantly, constantly ensuring perfection, demanding no less, but work as hard as you work. Some of the people that are no longer in my motorcycle club have gone on to be presidents of great motorcycle clubs in Atlanta and other states. It lets me know that I have had some impact on their lives. Many of the things that I've told them, they've come back and told me, you know, Dragon, you were right. So I always tell the truth, even if it hurts. It's like when your parents tell you, you're going to bust your ass off uh, rear end, and then you bust your rear end. You come back later and you go, you know, Dad, I'm so glad you taught me that because you were right. You didn't lie to me. I was such a butthead, but now I know better. But I wouldn't have known if you hadn't given me those examples. You take the people that are under you, and you never know who it is. Hey, listen. I was the last guy anybody ever thought would be national president. It took me over five years to, pro well, somewhere close to five years to prospect to even get in the club. But one person, one person loved me. 
and cared for me and ensured that I never went away, even though I could never get voted in. He was Paul Pep Perry, the founder of the Mighty Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club Nation. He began instilling in me the concepts of what would finally be my turn to lead. So you never know who it is. You never know who's going to be your all-star. Big Sal Tillman talked about it today in his uh, video. He talked about all-stars. He said every club has two or three all-stars. Those are the people for which the whole motorcycle set turns out. They're everywhere. They do everything. And they're usually the most hated. They could be the president. Or they could be the... Uh, the a PRO, or they could be a prospect. Somebody that's always on the go, always on the move, always putting it down for the MC. You never know who that person's gonna be. As president of the Atlanta chapter of the Black Sabbath, when I first brought the Black Sabbath here, I took every single prospect to the mountains and I taught him how to ride side by side. We call that suicide formation, which is how motorcycle clubs are supposed to ride. We're going to do that. We're going to do that video. How the motorcycle clubs are supposed to ride two by two. Abreast, the highway patrol calls it, two abreast. Suicide formation in tandem. We only ride this uh, craziness that I see. What do you call that? Stack of, you know, one behind the other, kind of like, I don't even know what the hell you call that. Uh, we only do that when the road is too narrow or something. And even then, I like my guys elbow to elbow. Why? Because MC means move the crowd. And we look damn good when the crowd is moving in two. But we'll go back to that. I took, used to take all of my prospects, even when I became a national president, up to the mountains, the Georgia mountains, Blue Ridge Mountains, Helen, Georgia, and I would teach them how to ride two by two. I'd sit them right next to me. They get mad at me. If you ever see somebody doing this, they're mimic, they're mocking me. And I put them two by two, and we would ride through the mountain passes, real crazy, at 25, 30 miles an hour. If you can ride through those mountain passes two by two, you can ride down the highway together two by two. But I was training them. Yeah, 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 that's the road captain's job. Well, he can do that too. But to have an interaction with the top man in the motorcycle club and to say, he took me on my nomad journey across the United States, just me and him. How many of you have done that? How many of you have ridden by yourself with your president, him getting to know you and finding out who you are? If you're in an organization where the president doesn't even know your name, maybe that president needs to get on his game. Presidents, officers, reach out and touch these people. They are your most valuable resource. They mean the most to you. The people are the MC. When you're training your replacement, you're training your replacement because one day, they will represent your MC. And they will be the greatest thing your MC has to offer. And folks will call them president, national. And they'll call you, OG, godfather. But the respect will never go away. Because damn it, uh, I'm not cursing anymore. You taught him how to do it. Training your people to replace you is the same thing as leadership by example. Leadership by example is you doing everything you're supposed to do and more. Countless are the members of my club who have awakened to find me asleep by their bedside. Now they know how to conduct themselves when a member gets sick. Countless are the brothers near my chapter who 
have had their motorcycles break down and the national president get his ass uh, self up out of bed and go with my trailer and get their bikes. Now they know how nothing comes between a brother on their side of the road and you going to get them. I don't care what time it is. I took one of my brothers from, my, from uh, the Pensacola area. He wanted to ride across country. Oh my God, he had a 1983 Goldwing. And he just bought it, so he needed a timing belt. Well, you've got to change the timing belts on those because you just don't know when they were last changed. So, I said, come on over to my place. I had a cast on my leg. You guys remember this three years ago. I was having a gout attack where I couldn't even ride my own motorcycle. So I'm crawling around. Anybody who knows gout knows the pain. I'm crawling around the shop in my garage, screaming in pain, trying to figure out how to fix this brother's motorcycle so he could ride across country. Well, we got that time. YouTube. YouTube teaches you everything. We got that timing belt right where we're about to take it off and something happened and it went woo! And stuff went everywhere. And I said to God, sir, I'm not going to get this motorcycle fixed. And uh, he looked at me and he said, do you know what you're doing? Because he saw the look on my face and I smiled at him and I said, young brother, of course I do. A half a day later, the bike was fixed. That brother has ridden all the way to California and back. To Little Rock, Arkansas and back. To Tulsa and back. On the timing chain, I put in his motorcycle. Well, we did it together. So what I'm saying is, leadership. Now I know that brother will be able to take any other brother in our nation and help him fix his bike even if he doesn't know what the hell he was doing, like I did. But we had YouTube and we had the books. People, it's all about your heart. It's all about your love of this patch back here. I once assigned a prospect to wash every bike at the making chapter because he pissed me off he did something wrong. So surprised was that prospect when I showed up to wash all of those bikes with him. It's about the love you give these people, the training you give these people. I learned my training technique from the United States military, the Navy. And so, for some of you, I have an advantage. But it's really quite simple. You train with love, not fear. You train with respect, not intimidation. You praise in public, discipline in private. You don't make people feel like two cents. And when you do, you damned apologize profusely and try to make sure that you don't do it again. These are the qualities of leadership that people will respect. These are the qualities of leadership that people will admire. You can't be so bold that you can't make a mistake. And you can't be so tall that you can't talk to a prospect. Road captains, love your people's motorcycles more than you love your own. Get underneath your brothers and sisters' motorcycles. Touch them, lick them, feel them, taste them. Know what the tread looks like. Know their motorcycles better than you know your own. Be able to tell a brother, you need to get off that onion skin, dog or I'm gonna find your black uh, rear end, or white one, you know, whatever the rear end color may be. You have to, you have to, uh, you have to, you have to own your position as a leader. Then they know how to take care of the bikes when they become road captain. You have to know your responsibilities, like you know the back of your hand. If you're the treasurer, what are you waiting for to deliver the financial report? Why we gotta beg you for that? Why doesn't everybody know exactly what we got in the bank and what we spent? And why aren't you taking two or three or four or five other people 
and training them on how to be the treasurer too. Listen, nobody's president forever, nor road captain, or you might be like that striker's president, president today, PRO tomorrow, business manager the day after, who knows? But what I do know is I want the Mighty Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club Nation to prosper another 42 years, 43 in February, way beyond me. I want someone to say, that guy taught me something. That's what I say about my founder. He was like a father to me. And for a lot of us black guys, and a lot of people who joined motorcycle clubs who didn't have fathers or brothers or full families, sometimes you're the only father figure these folks have. It's the truth. I have a coach who's the president of my Fort Worth chapter. He's a father to hundreds of kids who he's coached through the years who haven't had fathers. And he stands up and he looks after them and he gives them, there's so many kids that have slept on his couch. And as a president of these young black men and young men of, of every color, you're gonna meet a lot of men that didn't have fathers and didn't have these figures. And they want your training. They follow you president because they love you. They follow you road captain because they look up to you. They respect you. They follow you, Sergeant at Arms, because of your authority when you slam that gavel down. But they're also damn watching you. They're watching everything you do. So when you act like a pig and chase all the women in the motorcycle club and disrespect them and call them bitches and whores, I'm ashamed to say I've acted like that. They see that, but no more. I used to have a submarine commander that said, we all deserve the right to get smarter later. So get smarter and be better. Be better than you were yesterday. Train these people, teach them the right way to go. If you're a president and you haven't ridden with your, your chapter or if you're a road captain, and you haven't taken every single prospect out and every weak member. You got a weak member that doesn't want to ride in a pack, you say, okay, ride in the back of the pack. You're not good enough to ride with us. Teach them. Take them out. Take them up to the Georgia mountains up there and teach his ass to ride. Make them ride. Teach them. And if you build it, they will follow. If you build it, they will come. Build these MCs with pride, passion, and compassion. And teach these people how to love. Think not of what the motorcycle club can do for you, but rather what you can do for the motorcycle club. Stop saying I, 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 and start saying we, we, we. Stop saying mine, 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 me, me, me. And start saying ours, ours, ours. We, we, we. Because we are a nation, together as one. Or we are a chapter, together as one. One group, one family, one patch. No front patch lovers. You know what? If you have to, the Bible says if thy right hand offends thee, cut it off. Well, maybe not in the New Testament. It says that somewhere. I know it. I, I heard it. And so if your patch offends you, cut that sucker off. And just be known as your name for a little while. You know what I mean? That way, you can get away from the ego and the pride and get back to... What this whole thing is about and it's about family it's not part-time for me and it's not part-time for most of your members it's about a family caught in the love of the lifestyle of two wills 
We ride in the rain. Some of us. We ride in the snow. Others of us. We ride in the sleet. Some of us. And we ride in the hot sun. Some of us. Others of us trailer. But we ride. And we live this lifestyle. We camp out together. We sleep out together. We fight together. We love together. And we greet each other with a hug and a kiss. Because these bikes are not safe. And when you greet a brother, you don't know if this is the last time you see him. So we greet each other with love. Any questions? Are y'all even listening? Am I gonna speak at the pro meeting, uh, pro convention this year? I don't know. I hope so. I had fun last year. If they invite me back, of course. All right. So. No questions. Maybe I covered it all. Listen, I challenge you all to lose weight if you're overweight. Too many of us are falling dead from these stupid diseases. I'm so proud of my boy Big Meech, High Council President of the uh, uh, of, of the Black Sabbath Nation of the uh, Black Sabbath Nation. He's lost like 15 pounds. He's walking every day. He's looking good, man. I just need him to put them cigarettes down and uh, and, and get skinny. People say, oh, don't get skinny, you get healthy. Listen, get skinny is my moniker. Use whatever moniker you want. Uh, Block Burner's in the building. It's good to see you, brother. Get skinny, folks. Let's not have this diabetes. And I challenge the motorcycle club communities. All this damn fried fish, and I, I'm, I'm going to stop cussing. All this fried fish and fried... It's easy to make that cheap garbage. And I love fried fish like everybody else. But can we have some green beans as an alternative to the uh, to the French fries? I mean, really, fried fish, fried fish, bread, and, and uh, French fries. Really, every Wednesday night, and then uh, beer and soda pop. You know, you people are killing yourselves. Hey, me too. Like everything I'm against, I once was. So I was 400 pounds. I'm three, about 316 right now. So I'm trying to get down to 250. Please pray for me and come with me. Fat Boy Getting Skinny is my Facebook page where you can follow my eating regimen and get skinny with me. Listen, prospectsbible.com, Motorcycle Club PRO's Bible, mcpro'sbible.com. Prospects Bible for Women, prospectsbibleforwomen.com. Clara said, even though she's not an MC, she still listens. Well, maybe you'll join an MC on a social club. Clara, uh, Sierra, rather, we'd love to have you. All right, people. Thank you for listening. I'm going to try to get these down to 15 minutes. Uh, I'm working on that. I think if I have a prepared speech, I can do that. And, uh... Make sure to vote. All right. I love you. Be good to one another. Love one another. That's what this is all about. I heard it said in the Bible, God asked us how could we love him, someone he's never seen, when we can't even love one another, people we see every day. Well, how can you claim to love the MC when you can't even treat the damn people right in the MC? Huh. Beats me. Well, it's dark out here, and I'm going to go for a ride. Woo, I love this shit. Stop.
I love this stuff. Y'all gotta stop me from cussing.